So we got some parts coming in for our tail light restoration series. And if you remember on the disassembly video, our left side housing was busted. And I found this piece on the internet pretty cheap. And upon further inspection, it does have a few issues, but it's very usable. The first thing that I noticed, this uh, tab that was broken on ours, it does have just a little bit of a crack there. And um, you can also see it on the inside as well. That must be a pretty common area for uh, stress on these housings. So you want to check that area, I'm sure. When I talk about the frustrating part of restoration work, this is kind of it. A lot of times donor parts are in the same condition as the one that you got. Uh, this one may be a little bit better and I think we can use it. There is another issue with it right here. The fuel door uh, bracketry is gone. So somebody must have used it for another project. On our original one, we have our, our back bracket and our front bracket. But if you remember, the front bracket is pretty much toast. I mean, it's, it's, it's gone. Uh, it's held together with rivets. There's four rivets. And uh, we'll be taking that out and we'll try to preserve as much of this as we can. And I'll just try to make a template out of it and put this back. But uh, like I said, I, I believe with uh, the combination of parts that we've got here and the fact that this stud is still pretty much intact, even though it's, it's uh, really fatigued and does have that one crack in it, I believe we'll be okay. So what we're gonna do now, we'll go ahead and drill these four rivets out. And uh, that way we can get this metal off of here we can get this back part cleaned up and then we can get to making our template. So I took my time in getting these rivets out just so I could have something to reference as far as size goes in case I decide to go back with the rivets. But uh, this is our bracket that we needed. It should clean up nice. That's a 5 30 seconds drill bit that you'll need to drill those rivets out without getting into the metal. So this right here is what's left of the part that we need to make for our tail light housing. And Basically you can see the outline on the housing itself, even though this piece is gone. And basically it's just gonna make a, a 90. And so that's how we know exactly what our pattern's gonna be. I've already checked the gauge and it looks like it's right at 18 gauge. So what I'm gonna do is just cut me a square metal out that should be big enough for the patch. We'll put a 90 in it and then we'll trace this and uh, cut out only what we need. Should be pretty simple. Should be plenty. Right here's our part, and I just cut it out with a cutoff wheel, cleaned the edges up with the die grinder, and I will say that I have missed the smell of burning metal. It has been a while. So let's go ahead and mark where I'm gonna put this 90 degree bend at, and we'll see if this little break I got works. I'm gonna give myself just a little bit of extra room. This thing would probably do a lot better if I actually anchored it to a more solid table or smaller metal. I mean, it is fairly cheap. Like I said, that's just a cheap little break. It's something I've had kicking around here. And I think I give like 30 some dollars for it. It's, 
I really haven't got my money's worth out of it. It's kind of cheap, but it did do okay on this. And I believe it would do better if I actually physically screwed it down to one of the tables. But I believe this is gonna work. So I'm trying to think of how to do this the best way. And originally put the piece of metal in like that and traced it. But this is actually gonna be setting more inward to the 90 degree bend just because the thickness of the metal. And it's gonna be so much easier to cut it on the back side versus trying to cut all this metal out inside this 90. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'll trace it on the back side and I'll allow myself enough material here to come in the thickness of the metal and uh, I believe it'll work out a lot easier. All right, so right here's the piece and if anything, I may have it just a little slightly larger than the original. However, it does fit the part and uh, I believe we'll be okay with it. I'm gonna let the part dictate basically where I put the holes. There's two mounting holes here and there's two right here. And like I said, I'm letting the part dictate where they go, not this old piece. So that's the next step, drill out the holes and uh, be ready to move forward. All right, so here it is. Went ahead and got our holes cut and uh, had a little trouble grinding out a perfectly good circle even though I had it marked. I used a uh, carbide burr to do that and it turned out okay. But uh, like I said, I may just barely be a little bit larger on my patch, but uh, it's gonna work. And you can see right here, it fits our part. Got the holes drilled now. Most likely you won't have to do this to your tail lights. It just so happened that the donor piece that I bought was missing this and uh, yours will probably be in a lot better shape. But if you do need to do this, it's really no big deal. So right here's what we did to uh, reattach our fuel door brace to our left side tail light. We used what they call Chicago screws, I believe is the correct term for them. And here's this side. This is the side that the tail light and the gasket and the filler will cover. So once assembled, this won't be seen anymore. And this is a side that you can see. And I think this gives it a, a rivet style look without having the exact rivet and the rivet tool. Also, one of the other things that's gonna allow me to take all this metal off of this plastic housing, we can blast this metal and get it coated and uh, it's gonna just aid in the restoration process. These were slightly longer and I did have to file them down with a die grinder just a touch so that they would uh, fit snugly with the bracket and the lens housing. And this right here give you an idea. When I say that I shortened it, this one here on the bottom is the one that I shortened and then the one on the top there is original length. I bought them just a little bit longer and that way I would have just a little bit of adjustment. We got an old saying in the wiring business that uh, you can always cut it but you can't stretch it. So just to keep from messing up and ordering the wrong size, I, I did buy them just a little bit longer and filed them down to the size that I needed. This is our donor part that we've got. As you can see, we've got our epoxy repair done. I've also strengthened up this little bit of crack here and um, we're ready for the next step. All right guys, when it comes to restoring plastic parts on your restoration, I'm gonna share with you a technique that I use, but you have to use extreme caution when performing this task. What am I talking about? sandblasting plastic parts. I'll show you how I do it. Okay, there's our plastic tail light housing in the blast cabinet. Couple things on the setup. We're using some aluminum oxide. However, this is really worn out aluminum oxide. It started off as 80 grit, and I'm just guessing it's, it's probably 150 grit by now. I mean, it really needs to be changed bad. 
I wouldn't trust this for prepping metal for powder coat. However, for this, it's going to work perfect. The next tip about the setup is definitely reduce the pressure. I normally send blast anywhere from 90 to 100 PSI. However, you can see I've got it set just above 60. And with the air depressed, it's going to be into the 50s. The next tip, probably the biggest to take away from this sandblasting plastic, is to keep the gun moving at all times. Do not stand in one spot. If you do, it's going to generate heat. Heat is going to melt the plastic. So you just want to hit it and go. Let's get started. And just in that short amount of time, we blasted this area right here and you can see what a difference it it made from this area to what we haven't touched yet so just keep it moving and you'll be okay once you're finished you're left with a beautiful part that's got the right tooth that's ready to accept some paint you can imagine just how much time you've saved getting into all these hard to reach areas with the scotch bright pads so yeah this is ready for paint with the exception of a final wash with our Sim Soap. All right guys, so this is our housing for our 81 Camaro Project Fast Times. It's been clean, it's actually been blasted, and um, then it's been cleaned with some soap and water and rinsed really well, and we're ready for the next step, which is gonna be our Bulldog Adhesion Promoter followed with our rust-oleum metallic finish chrome looking paint. I typically do this in the summertime so I can get the plastic good and warm. It's winter time now, but I've got these lights here that serve as kind of a heat lamp. And I've had it on for some time. You see here, this thing is close to 100 degrees may just be just a little too hot we'll back them up here and uh, we'll get ready to spray so you guys might remember when we disassembled the uh, car when we dropped the bumper to get the tail lights out just how bad a shape these bumper strips were and uh, this is the original here but you can see the rust that's on the back and uh, reached out to Camaro Parts Garage on Instagram. He's also got a YouTube channel as well. I'll put a link in the description below. He hooked us up with a set that is a great used part that is a perfect candidate to be restored. You can see here on the inside, very little rust and just some pits and that stuff on the outside. But these will clean up really nice once we get them in the blast cabinet. If you're looking for any second gen parts, definitely check with him, see what he's got, and uh, I'm sure he'll help you out. So now let's get to the painting process of these tail light housings so we can get to final assembly. These housings aren't perfect by any means. Um, They've got some imperfections. Uh, some of the silicone, I didn't get every bit of it off. Even that blast cabinet, it won't touch silicone. Um, it just kind of bounces off of it. Um, you know, this don't really have to be perfect. I mean, you're trying to get everything the best that we can, but um, once the lens goes on, you're not gonna see this. But like I said, we are restoring the car, so we try to do the, everything to the best of our ability.
ready to put our paint on and the secret to this plastic is very light coats. You have to let it build really slow and that's what we're going to do. It'll take us a while but uh, I've been shaking this can up and I've tested it. It uh, seems like it's spraying pretty good and we're ready to go. You can tell we still got a lot of black showing. But like I said, this is just the first coat. And uh, this stuff actually covering pretty good. So I'm thinking maybe, maybe three light coats just to make sure we got full coverage. The main areas I need it is right here where the bulbs are. This over here doesn't really matter as much, but um, we'll make it look uniform. All right guys, so I think it turned out pretty good. One thing about that chrome paint is it does show every little flaw in the substrate. It looks like trash, but it's actually flaws in the plastic. Um, and some of it was places of silicone and everything. Like I said, I, I sandblasted this plastic, but uh, you know, it still looks really good, especially what we started with to what we have now and uh, i'm pretty happy with it once the lens goes on you'll never see this part of it um we do have to refinish the back side and you guys seen me unmasking it so reason i did that so quickly is i wanted to get that tape off of there with the tape residue i may end up taking some uh, waterborne cleaner and just going around the edges where i had that uh, tape at but We'll give this a few days to cure up. I'm gonna leave it under these uh, heat lamps for a few hours, and uh, we've got another one to do. I won't bore you with that, but um, when we get ready to do the back side, I'll be back. All right, so just like on the front side, we're gonna paint the back, and now we're gonna go through the same process. Everything's prepped, everything is uh, Pretty much ready to go. We're going to do the same thing. Our Bulldog Adhesion Promoter. And then our top coat is going to be our Sims Trim Black. I'm having a little bit of trouble getting some of this blue tape to stick. I didn't really want to use the yellow. But um, I think it's going to be okay. Like I said, the main places I need the silver is in these buckets where the light socket goes. I'm not going to film it. I filmed the painting of the inside. I'm not going to film this painting. We'll uh, just bring you back once we got both houses painted and show you how everything turned out. Guys, so these housings turned out amazing. The finish on the outside, it just looks really good. I did have a hiccup on the inside and I thought this might would happen. That's why I used that blue tape. But even with all the precautions that I took, the blue tape did take some of the sheen off of the chrome. And I'll show you some of that in full disclosure. You can see how it removed some of the sheen. I'm guessing this paint wasn't all the way cured. And then where I've got it under those heat lamps. Um, if this was summertime, I probably wouldn't have had that problem. I could have set these things out in the sun for a few days and really got them cured up but that's the only thing that i'm thinking um it's it's actually not that bad uh, you just want it reflective in there for the bulb once the lens goes over it you're not going to see it and we could scuff it and reshoot it but then we we run the risk of uh damaging the outside which is actually what you're going to see so 
We're going to call this a success and press forward. And I've got a few more pieces to restore. And then we'll be ready for final assembly. Just looking through the older clear lens, you can still see that it's reflective in there. But you can't see where we pulled the sheen off with the tape. So we're going to run what we brung here and uh, hopefully wrap this project up. I'm real happy with the way the outside of these housings turned out. Uh, it's a very minimum paint thickness on the outside, which is what you want. I'm just really happy the way that turned out. Really looks amazing. Can't wait to see it with all the new parts on it, new lenses. It's going to look really good. Guys, I'm extremely happy with the way the restoration of these taillight housings are turning out. If you want to see the part two continuation of this taillight housing restoration series, there'll be an end screen right in this area. Also, there'll be an end screen for the disassembly part, as well as an end screen for how we restored the brackets that hold the fuel door onto the housings. Be sure to drop us a comment, subscribe if you haven't. We'll see you next time.